morning, guys. I shaved for you guys, so I hope you guys appreciate that. I hate shaving ever since my military days. So it had been about four, six, seven days. My wife was even getting on me, but it's so gray now I have to shave it, so hopefully it looks pretty good. Hope you guys are doing well. What do you got for me? Coach, last week Austin said that um, you needed a kind of a realignment. Was that basically? He was jamming himself a little bit with his plant foot, and that caused some inconsistencies with his follow through, his leg swing and follow through and ball contact. And it's just a little tweak that you know he found. We watched some tape together. He figured it out and worked on it. Um, sent him down to the stadium twice this week, uh, Monday and then yesterday, uh, with a snapper and the holder to get some extra work in. Um, and you know he's, it's still a little bit of a work in progress, but he's he's found a little bit more consistent uh, leg swing and follow through. So I think he's on the right track. More common than, than we know of when you know a specialist with it, such a fine line. Absolutely, and, it, and especially. You know, kicking field goals with the snap and the hold and the tilt and, and everything that we're working with Jamie on as well as a holder. Uh, and he's come a long, long way since the spring and he's become a really good holder because he's such a good athlete that he picked it up pretty quick. Um, you know, I think they've all done a good job of working well with each other this past week or two. And, and um, so, you know, hopefully that extra work at the stadium. We're going to do some more field goals today and more punts again tomorrow. Uh, we'll continue working on getting ready for Sunday. Given uh, Jamie's limited experience kicking, what potential does he have as a you punter? Know, that's, honestly, that's why he made this football team. I, mean, I think the safe bet would have been going with Britton. You know, he's more consistent. He's been around a long time. I think it would have been very difficult to let a guy like Jamie out of the building. He's so talented, uh, got such a big leg swing. Uh, the sky's the limit for him. I mean, he hasn't. I think he's just scratching the surface on how well he can be or how good he can be and how good of a punter and holder he can be in this in this league. Um, I just think he's so talented that, you know, we just got to make sure we channel that energy and talent and, and hopefully get as many consistent punts as we possibly can. Did you, did you guys get feelers that teams were just waiting to pounce on him? You know, that's a great question. I don't know the answer to that. You'd have to talk to, you know, to, uh, to John and to Elliot and the personnel guys. I don't pay attention to that. I mean, I was, you know, the special teams coordinators and other teams mentioned to me, you know, wow, this guy's really good. I mean, where'd you find him and that type of thing? I said, I didn't find him. I went down and worked him out because I was told to. Who wants to go to Arkansas Pine Bluff, right? But no, actually, it was a nice area. It's really nice down there. I had a good time. Coaching staff was great. They were really good to me. And and uh, Jamie had a bunch of players out there. There's all his ex-teammates out there watching him punt and making fun of him and and uh, making fun of the way he throws the ball. Uh, he can he can spin it with a, a rugby throw, but he can't throw it overhand very well. But we're working on that so we can run some fakes down the line. Describe his progress as a holder and have that factor into everything. He um, that was a big factor in the final decision. That's why the last game was important for him to go out and and, and hold well for for Austin like he did. And um, you know he's such a good athlete. He picked up on it pretty quick. But when he first got here, remember he didn't do it in college. He did everything in college for kicking, punting, kicking off field goals, everything. Um, so he had never even practice holding before. When we went down and worked him out, we saw that he was raw, but he was talented and he has great hands. He's a very good athlete, as you guys know. And I think that, pay, you know, in the decision making process, it was a big deal. Um, but he showed enough in that last preseason game and throughout the spring and summer that he's got the ability to do it. Mike, is there a distance that you guys would trot him out there for a last second field goal? Jamie, you talking about? No, I think Austin would be the better bet, best bet. He's got such a strong leg as well. He'd be the guy. Is Dontrell going to be your primary uh, kick and punt returner? And if so, just could you touch on how you feel about him? You know, return? Dontrell right now, and he's come a long way too. You know, he's return kicks in, in, in the NFL for, for Cleveland last year. Um, he's got really good vision. He runs hard. He's strong. He's dependable. Uh, he'll probably do both, but I wouldn't say that Dearness wouldn't, you know, be out there as well. And um, and then who knows on punt return, you got those two really good receivers back there with, you know, with Jarvis and Odell that are always possibilities that it's in the fourth quarter. We need a big play. You know, those are your big play guys that you can go to and, and hopefully win a game with one of them. You know, um, we've been watching Charlie Hewlett here for a couple of years. He seems like a machine out there. Yeah, he's um, what we call the jugs machine, little Chaz, you know, little Charles. So, uh, so he's kind of like the human jugs machine. He's he's very good. He's a pro, true pro. Um, you know, the, all all the snappers in this league. There's only one of them on the team, so they all work very, very hard. But he's a hard worker. He's really good with these young two young kids, and um, you know, he'll be a good leader force in that room. Look, we the guy, uh, uh, I can't remember his name actually. Just something, but he could. He knew exactly. How many times the ball would uh, 
spiral when it um, went to the holder, so he uh, never really had to spin the laces when he. Is he like that? Is we're he... we're trying. We're it, and that's another work in progress because you know Britain caught the ball a little bit different than Jamie, so sometimes the laces aren't perfect, and we're working through that right now. But I think we're on the right track, and we'll we'll be more consistent. You know, even Charlie even said it today. He was joking around today in a meeting that you know he's the one who makes the field goal. You know, it's it all starts with him, and he's right. I mean, we joke around about that, but you know, it, it's it's there's a lot more into it. Uh, kicking a field goal, making a field goal PAT, than just the kicker. You know, it's the snap, it's the hold, it's the protection, it's all the little things. It's uh, field conditions, wind, all the things we've talked about before. Uh, but you know, Charlie's a pro. He's a true pro. I'm glad we have him. Why do you think it was so important to send the guys down to the stadium twice this week? And is it because it's this stadium as opposed to if you were at a different team where they need to go to the stadium? Um, well, no. I think it's important anytime you have two new guys, you know, the new punter, the new kicker. The more familiar they are with their surroundings, the, the more we can make First Energy Stadium a uh, home field advantage for us. Because uh, honestly, they've only been down there for a scrimmage and then two preseason games until this week. Um, so when they go down there, I want them to feel, I think comfortable would be the wrong word, I think more confident. Every time they go down there, hey, I've been here, I know what the flags are doing, I know what the winds are doing, I've got an idea where I need to punt the ball or what hash I need to kick the game-winning field goal from, et cetera. And the more we go down there, the more confident they'll become by, you know, just by working down there and you're getting used to that stadium. Because as you guys know, that as the, as the year goes on, it's going to get colder and windier and the weather's going to turn nasty here in Cleveland, like it always does. And But I think the more they kick outdoors and more they kick in a stadium setting, more so than the practice field, that'll get them ready for pretty much any outdoor stadium. You do that on a weekly basis? Yes. In terms of Gillen's um, personality, demeanor, mm -hmm. uh, is he good for you guys to have in your special teams rooms? Just that we saw a video yesterday of him dancing in the locker room. And he's I just didn't see that video. Yeah. I don't want to see that video. But, you know, I mean, just his personality and maybe even the impact that he has on Austin Cyber, who seems to be quite the perfectionist. Yeah, I think they, they've actually talked about that. You know, one's a very tightly wound guy, Austin, and one's a little bit loosey-goosey, and I think they're very good for each other. If they're both loosey and goosey, I don't know, I think that'd be a little difficult for me to be around, um, to be honest with you, because I'm more tightly wound. I'm more closer to Austin in that regard. Uh, but I think, you know, Jamie needs to approach um, he approaches his job with very, very good focus, and he's a true pro. And I think he's learning how to be a better pro by being around guys in our locker room that are good pros. Um, but they are good for each other, and he is good. Jamie's been great. Um, and I think the good thing about him is that he might not hit a good punt, might be a below average punt, and the next one he's going to bomb because he doesn't worry about what he did in the last one. He probably forgot anyway, to be honest with you. Uh, so having a short memory for him and his personality helps in that regard. How many different varieties of punts does he have? Well, you've got your, your basic, what we call a field punt from, you know, you have the backed up punt from inside the five. You've got a field punt that's anywhere from the six yard line to the 45 yard line or so. And then you've got what we call his Aussie punt or plus 50 punt. Um, he's got some different um, tricks in his bag is, you know, uh, what we call it, clubs in the bag. I'm not much of a golfer, so if you hear me use a golf analogy, it won't be very good. Uh, but he does have different uh, tricks that he can use and different kicks and different win situations, kicking from the hash, keep, keep the return teams off balance. I'd rather not talk about getting ready for a, a ball game. But, you know, he can keep people off balance because he's got that rugby background and he can pretty much do whatever he wants with the football as long as he's consistent with it. How much of a premium do you put on him being left-footed? Um, I don't think it was a decision... You know, it, it, it's kind of a bonus. It, it wasn't part of the decision-making process, process per se, but um, being the, given the fact that he is left-footed and we are going to play 15 games outdoors this year, I think that does it has a lot to do with uh, putting other returners that be a little bit uncomfortable unless they have a, a left-footed punter in their in their organization. I think it makes it difficult. It's hard to, you know, get used to a lefty off the jugs. It's not. It's just not the same, and especially his ball that he can do so many different things with it as well. Experience as a special teams coordinator, what uh, what stadiums are the most difficult to kick in? Well, ours is tough. I haven't been here a lot, but ours is tough. Um, I think you know, being in the NFC North for eight years, the, the Chicago and Green Bay's were difficult. Um, to certain times of the year, of course, Chicago is always windy, but Green Bay, when it was cold and windy and nasty, it made it, made it tough. So that makes me appreciate those guys, like a Mason Crosby, all the more because he's had such a great career. All, all, you know, one bad year, and he has had a great year other than that, and he's kicked you know, in that division, in that stadium, year in and year out. So I have a lot of respect for those guys that, that uh, are successful for over a longer period of time in those stadiums. 
It's very, like Phil Dawson would say that Chicago, Cleveland, and Pittsburgh. Probably Pittsburgh. I haven't coached there a lot, but yes, especially the open end. You know, my son coaches there. He's a graduate assistant there now, and I was at the game uh, the other night, and it was a beautiful night, so that made a, a difference. But being in that stadium, I kind of got juiced up before the game. I, hey, actually, my son got me sideline passes. I know people now. Um, <laughs> it was kind of cool. My wife and I were out there watching pregame and watching our son, and she was pretty emotional for me. It was kind of surreal, but uh, watching him coach. But being in that stadium and understanding the wins and it's going to be it's going to be tough to play there as well and Cincinnati and Baltimore as well I mean they each have their own challenges Can you embrace Jamie being such a willing tackler oh absolutely now you don't want him to tackle I mean the reason he had three tackles because we didn't cover worth a flip on those three plays in the over the two game period so it really kind of ticked me off to be honest with you but having him as a last resort to someone that's not afraid to stick his nose in there as long as he stays healthy and he's a pretty big strong kid so uh but yeah that's a nice bonus to have but you're hoping he doesn't make any this year because that means we're covering punts and kicks better than we did the other night with all due respect to previous coaches here did special teams need a massive overhaul um i don't know if overhaul is the right word i think that it we have a focus from our our general manager our personnel department and our head coach that i don't know if they've had here in years past you know before john and, and freddie became you know, the GM and head coach, respectively. Um, I don't know that for a fact. I don't want to speak for them because I'm not going to criticize uh, people that have been here before. But I do know that we do have great um, uh, attention to detail with our head coach and attention to detail with our personnel department, starting with John, about the importance of special teams and how it can help us win games. And then hopefully we can, you know, carry that baton and, and, and be great on teams in, in every phase. And that's the goal. Um, how difficult a challenge is the Titans out of the gate, especially what they did on kickoff last year? Yeah, Darius Jennings is outstanding. He's, um, I, you know, I used to lose sleep over Devin Hester and all the other great returns we faced over the years, but you know, this kid, he may not be Devin Hester, but he's really good. He's got, he's not a big guy, but he runs like a big guy. He's got good vision. Um, he's explosive. He's quick. He makes people miss. He averaged 31.7 yards of return last year and 22 returns with that touchdown against Miami in Week One. He's a very, very dangerous returner. They're well coached. They do a great job with their scheme, and we've got our challenges. Piggyback off Mary Kay's question um, about you know Gillen's tackling, and the, you know you mentioned the rugby background. Mm -hmm. Is he the, one of the better, if not the best, uh, tackling punters you've had? I'm just curious if if that stands out. Um, I think right now he's the most willing tackler. I think. You know, a lot of these guys, as they get a little bit older, I've been around some veteran punters and kickers too. They'd rather not throw their body in there because they're older, and it, you know they they're not as effective as a punter or kicker or whatever afterwards. Um, you know, he's such a great athlete because of his you know rugby background, and now you know he played some soccer in high school too. Um, you know, he's just he's good at what he does, and like I told Mary Kay and the rest of you guys, I, we don't need him to tackle. I mean, you'd rather you he didn't, but it's nice to have that eleventh guy there if you need him. Couple more. Said he kind of gets well, jammed. I'm having fun, Murph. I can see you. <laughs> he shaved and everything. I did. Going back to Austin, how you said he kind of was jamming himself as he was mm -hmm. uh, approaching the ball. Foot. Yep. Is that something that you know you rep and then it's taken care of, or is it something that you have to continually monitor throughout someone's career? You have to continue monitoring all day. Like a Monday, he went down the stadium. We tape all that stuff. We have uh, Chavis, one of our ops guys, goes down there. He drives the van. He sets everything up. He videotapes. I mean, these guys are amazing around here. They do so many great things for us. Um, but he, uh, we watched the tape from Monday, and he wasn't jamming himself, and he hit the ball really well. And then yesterday, he still hit the ball well, but he jams himself a few times. So it's something that we got to continue to monitor and correct, like any other technique in the game of football. You just that's specific to a kicker. What do you think the cause of that is? Is it an excitement to get to the ball, or um, just a little bit too long of a that last uh, step's a little bit too long? Uh, my jam so, and we're talking, we're talking. A little bit off, we're talking a couple inches now. That's why his jab has got to be nice and short. His second step is short. His last step is is really short. Everything's got to be short and compact and, and to be more consistent because, you know, the aim small, miss small type thing, that concept. So the more he works on it, the more consistent he'll be. 12 more, 14 more. That's it. <laughs> Doug, you got one, Doug, back there? Mr. Deacon? I, I did? I call him Mr. Deacon. He gets mad at me. Call me Doug. I said, I can't do that. I watched you play when I was a kid. You're, that's Mr. Deacon. It's sir. It's sir to me. When the yes, your son coaching, I mean, the, just the lineage of the family. I mean, is it, how cool is that for your, to keep this going? You know? Well, the toughest thing for me is he's very witty, young man, Michael, Michael Jr. He calls himself 2.0. He's the upgrade from 1.0. So 
he thinks that's really cute. Um, but it's, <laughs> excuse me, my dad went and spent a couple of days at camp at Pittsburgh, University of Pittsburgh, Coach Narduzzi was kind enough to let him go down there. So, you know, he's the first generation and then I'm the second generation and my son's the third generation. My dad told me, he said, I thought I was good. I think you're better. Your son's going to be even better than you. So I was like, all right. So that's a little bit of a challenge. So 2.0 is the upgrade. Absolutely. No, he was smart enough to get out of that. He he did one year in Minnesota, University of Minnesota as a special teams GA. And now he's on the defensive side of the ball. So he's a lot smarter than his old man. Helping with the linebackers, helping with the defense. Yep, helping a little bit with special teams because of his background.